Welcome to Talking Tuesday. I am your host, Fancy Quant, and today we're going to talk about the biggest lie in quant finance. And I think it persists in many other uh, kind of realms and fields and life in general. And the biggest lie we consistently see in quant finance is you can do everything. Okay. So there's this really odd thing where everyone's like, I want to be a full stack quant, or I want to be a full stack, you know, software engineer thing. I want to do everything under the sun, and I'm going to be extremely good at it. And the reality is you can't right? There are people that do it and are better at it. Um, but guys, you can't, you can't, you can't do everything. Um, so let me talk a little about, a little bit about this here. Um, as you start to work, I think at smaller firms, it's a little more apparent when you work at larger firms. Um, it's not as apparent because you're isolated, but when you're at smaller firms, you have to stretch and do a bunch of different things here. And so having worked in both firms, I think that helps to see this perspective a little better here, which is, when you work in a really large firm, you specialize in something very, very, very specific. And I often get people say, Dimitri, I have worked in this job for five years, 10 years, 15 years. I'm so tired of doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I get it. it I get it. You want to stretch a little. You want to learn a little. There's lots of time to do that. You can do some self-learning, but it's nice to do something different in a career here. Um, what you don't realize is when you bring in new employees, for example, and you watch them, they have they have no idea. There's all this knowledge that you gain over 5, 10, 15, 20 years in a career doing one very, very specific thing that you can spot things very fast. Um, I had a colleague of mine that taught me a lot about credit risk and credit modeling. And he would look at something and go, oh, that's wrong. Take it back and redo it. This and this and this is wrong. He'd like lay out what was wrong, why it was wrong, how it was wrong. I'm looking at it like this looks the exact same as every other thing I've done. Uh, the reason for this is because he has all this experience, this specialty in one very, very specific area. Uh, so he knew this sorts of things here. Now, when you go to a smaller firm, you often get spread out. So, you know, you have data engineering and maybe you're kind of dabbling in a little bit of that if you're small enough, like in a quant fund, um, which is fine. There's data, that sort of thing. And then you get into the quant side, which is like the model development side. That's what most of us want to do. And then you do implementation, which many people... I call it quant dev, as a lot of people call it as well. I like to call it implementation. You're implementing the models, putting them into production as a useful tool. And then you finally have traders at the very end of this. And people think, okay, if I do these sorts of jobs, this is full stack, right? I am doing everything. I'm doing the data engineering. I'm doing the model development, doing the implementation, and I'm doing the trading. Well, the reality is you're really not doing all of it because there are an infinitely number of areas of specialty within quant finance that you aren't doing. And you can't do it all. And so the issue, which is kind of something that keeps coming back in my, my thoughts here, is the reality of that you have a limited number of, of hours, of days, of time. You have a limited number of, you know, some sort of unit of time. You can only spend that amount of time learning and applying it for so much time, right? There's a limited source here. So, so let's say everyone lives to 100 years old, which is overstated. You're probably going to live to like, I don't know, 70, 75, maybe 80 depending where you live, but especially quants or high stress jobs probably will shorten our lifespans quite a bit. But the piece here is that you only have so much time. So like I tell students in the same stance of like you, you know, you're born, uh, you go through schooling and then you hit 18, you're an adult, then you do undergrad, then you do graduate school. That takes up so much time. You, you can't short track that. So typically most quants are typically like 24, 25 by the time they go through a master's degree. If you get a PhD, uh, you're probably going to be like 28, 29, 30, um, depending on where you are in the world and you know, different durations. Of you only have so much time though. And then I start to pull all these textbooks here, which I won't show you because we're on a podcast, but you end up like me where it's like, oh, there's this new topic I, I need to learn more about. I need to read more about. I need to dive deeper on this. Um, there's never enough time to learn every single specific piece. And typically when you're a full stack quant, you're specializing in one very, very specific thing. So when I look at really tiny uh, investing firms, for example, which a lot of people go, oh, man, it's amazing. It's a, it's a full stack quant. Uh, what you're doing is you're specializing on one very specific strategy, one very specific product here. So for example, a lot of people that are so-called full stack are doing HFT. Uh, I have not worked in HFT, but from the people I've talked to, the complexity of rigor on the model development piece uh, seems to be lower than other areas where you're, you know, 
spending more time and effort trying to hit a longer term strategy. Your strategy has to hold for a much longer time here. But again, when you're working, let's just say HFT, you have this specialization where you're learning just the data engineering that's just pertinent to your HFT fund. You are going to be doing model development or whatever strategy, optimization, whatever, um, that modeling piece just in relation to HFT within that niche you're working in. And then you're going to be doing implementation again on your platforms, your software, things like that. Um, I've seen a lot of people have been posting on the buy side here about, you know, there's this data processing and platforms and this is quant dev and they're going through it. It's very, very specific to linking to the exchanges, to the markets here. If you work in a bank, for example, or FinTech or somewhere else, the whole process is completely different. There's different software, different applications, different users, right? You're not connecting to an exchange. You're trying to connect to a customer at the end of the day. Um, to use this tool here. So my point being with a lot of this is that there's no way to really do everything. Um, I mean, I have stacks of textbooks and there's just so many topics I want to cover that are just interesting. Just focusing, like I just I just want to do uh, the quant piece, the actual you know research and developing models and mathematical theories and putting the finance and economics in with this mathematical structure and the statistics and the data piece here. Just doing the quant piece, you could spend an entire lifetime and you will still never touch every single part uh, of the space here. There's just so many interesting problems with this. And so I think it's this massive lie and it's very damaging in many sense that people are like chasing a dollar and think, oh, I want to end up as a full quant and I, or a full stack quant. They want to make all this money. They want to do every single piece of it possible. Just realize if you do that, and you can do that, that's a fine goal. You're going to know a little bit about everything just enough to do your job. Okay. And over the years, of course, you need more time. You will learn things in better depth here. So you'll meet other quant devs or implementations that know optimization better than you and have some sort of insight into a specific system because that's probably their full-time job. They're not trying to do all the other pieces here and that'll help you and you will become better and better and better over time. But I think you need to realize as a quant, it takes a lifetime. It's this process of continued learning. There's always new breakthroughs in mathematics and stats and they don't seem very exciting to most people, but they have implications on the industry and they're slowly being absorbed over time as people are using them. Um, but remember, you can't do everything everything under the sun and you can't know everything. Um, I don't know. The one other piece that really bugs me is when I see people that go and they get a graduate degree and they graduate and they're like, I am so smart. I know everything. Uh, if that is your mentality, you probably didn't get your money's worth out of your graduate degree. Um, typically those I see that come out and they graduate, and they go, oh man, I learned so much in my graduate program, but now I've realized there's an infinitely number of spaces, you know, out there that I could learn. I could go down. Um, I was recently talking to a student that was talking about uh, studying, it was like ergodic theory or non-parametric methodology and comparing that to some other fields of study here. And again, it's like these people spend, you guys, like a PhD just doing research on one very specific like topic and nuanced detail. And it takes them like five years to go through these courses and then they write a paper on it and it's very specialized on a very specific application here. Um, and again, you have this trade-off, right? You don't necessarily want to be so specialized. They run into academics a lot of times and it's like everything uh, looks to be the same exact problem because that's the one tool they studied. So, you know, as the saying goes, when you have a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. Um, this is the same process here where it's like they learn one tool, one, you know, model, one method, and they try to apply it to every single thing here. Being a quant is very, very challenging because you have to step back and you have to be able to look at this massive tool belt you have and figure out which new tools do I need that I don't even know I need and learn to learn more topics and more tools and methodologies and theories to make your tool belt bigger. And then in practice, you have to figure out how to implement those fast and quickly to make things happen here. So I hope you guys take this, you know, this video a little bit and think about this, like, Figure out what you want to do, really focus in on it, work on it for a while, and then, you know, start to work on expanding your tool belt here, but realize, like, it's a big lie. You're not going to know everything under the sun. You're not going to know every single piece. If you want to cover the full process here, as I mentioned, you know, from data engineering to quant to quant dev to uh, trading or the business side, whoever's using it, you're going to know every piece shallowly. You're not going to know them very deep. Um, and that's okay, right? You can pick and choose what you want to do, but just realize you you don't know everything. And I think this is a critical piece in the quant space because a lot of us feel like oh, we're not real quants. Um, you know, it's it's always kind of this thing that's eating at you a little bit. Like 
there's all these other things I need to know. And like when you go into like meetups and things and you talk to people at conferences, I'm just like, it blows my mind because there's so many other areas I've just haven't even thought about, I haven't touched, I haven't talked about. And so realizing and putting realistic expectations on yourself, you know, that there's a, there's time. It's, it takes time to learn, it takes time to learn, you know, the industry, the academic pieces here. Um, but really enjoy the process more so. And don't worry about trying to learn everything because the reality is you're never going to know it all. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time. Thanks.